بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين أعزائي الطلاب وطالبات كلية الطب إن شاء الله سوف في الحلقات القادمة نتكلم عن جميع محاضرات الخاصة بالغدد الصماء والسكري اليوم ستكون محاضرتنا عن لين العظام لدى الأطفال ريكتس إن شلدرن آه نبدا باذن الله هذه المحاضره آه في البدايه آه I would like to define uh, rickets in children uh, rickets is a disease of the growing bones in which defective mineralization uh, occurs in both bones and cartilage of the epiphysis uh, growth plates it's usually in children associated with Uh, bone deformities as well as with short stature while uh, if there is defective mineralization happened in adulthood uh, i.e. after closure of the epiphysis usually is not associated with short stature usually associated with bone deformity only uh, when there is defective mineralization happened after closure of epiphysis the term will not be called uh, rickets, will be called estiomalacia. So rickets in children, estiomalacia in adults. Uh, let's see what's happened uh, for vitamin D metabolism in the body. Uh, first of all, all of us has uh, in the dermis, in the dermis layer of the, our skin, a substance called 7-dehydrocholesterone. This substance, To be activated, it should be through ultraviolet uh, X-ray from the sun. Uh, ultraviolet uh, rays or X-ray from the sun uh, activates this compound, and this compound will be converted into cholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol has to go to the liver, first of all, to have a process of 25 hydroxylation, where we'll have 25 hydroxy vitamin D then this compound will go to into the kidney uh, where it will be having two types of oxidation one alpha hydroxylation and, and, and the other one is 24 alpha hydroxylation by the end of this hydroxylation we'll have two compounds one is called 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the most important and most active compound. And the other one is 24-25 dihydroxy vitamin D, which has no clinical significance so far. When we have uh, 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3, uh, this, this compound should be uh, uh, reacts with the vitamin D receptors. Vitamin D receptors usually is present in the intestine, in parathyroid gland, in the renal tubules, in the hair follicles. Uh, and these uh, receptors are very important for the active compound of vitamin D to have the action. So if we have a problem with a vitamin D itself, or we have a problem with the metabolism of vitamin D, or we have a problem of receptor, vitamin D receptors, all these can, have, can lead to uh, rickets in children or estimulation in adults. Let's see what are the sources of vitamin D, the exogenous source. As we mentioned now, uh, before, uh, we have endogenous source from the, our dermis. What about exogenous sources? Sunlight is the most important exogenous source in the whole world. And we are lucky in Saudi Arabia to have this source uh, in, uh, in large amount as we are a sunny country. So we, we, need, to, we need to get used or useful from this source. And uh, the other sources, exogenous sources, which are not as good as sun, Like we have milk products, fortified milk products. We have a good liver oil as well as the egg yolk. What are the types of rickets? The rickets has many types. We have hypocalcemic rickets, 
we have hypophosphatemic rickett and we have a combined source of rickett, both of them hypocalcemia and hypophosphatemia. Hypocalcemic rickett is the commonest type all over the world. A large number of children with rickets have a hypocalcemic rickets, while hypophosphatemic rickett is not that common. It's rather a rare uh, type, as well as a combined form of combination of hypocalcemia and hypophosphatemic rickett is also another uh, rare type of rickets. Let's start with the commonest type, which is the hypocalcemic rickets. And this usually, this type of rickets associated with high parathyroid hormone, what is called secondary hyperparathyroidism. The causes of this type of hypocalcemic rickets, as mentioned before, uh, lack of vitamin D due to decreased sun exposure, due to decreased intake of vitamin D, due to malabsorption diseases, for example, those with celiac disease, those with cystic fibrosis, those with chronic liver disease, those with biliary atresia, with any GI uh, tract, chronic GI tract, uh, problem impairing the absorption of vitamin D. Uh, another important cause, children with chronic liver disease. Why chronic liver disease affecting rickets? As we mentioned in the metabolism, that 25-hydroxylation of cholecalciferol is happened in the liver. So any disease affecting the liver a synthesis mechanism will lead to uh, vitamin D deficiency. Another important entity is chronic renal failure and renal tubular acidosis. All are a common and important cause of vitamin D deficiency in children. Uh, anticonvulsant, a lot of people uh, doesn't know that anticonvulsant might lead to uh, vitamin D deficiency through the uh, increased metabolism of this vitamin uh, in the cytochrome uh, by inducing cytochrome P450 activity. And uh, the last and not the least cause of hypocalcemic rickets is hereditary rickets. Hereditary rickets is not common. Uh, in the world, but in Saudi Arabia is rather uh, more common than other parts of uh, the world because we have high rate of consanguinity. And when we talk about uh, hereditary hypocalcemic rickets, we mean either we have a type 1 vitamin D dependent rickets where there is uh, an inherited deficiency of 1-alpha hydroxylase enzyme. So in this type of type 1 vitamin D dependent ricket, will have a normal 25 hydroxyvitamin D, but deficient 125 dihydroxyvitamin D because of the inherited deficiency of the enzyme. While type 2 vitamin D dependent rickets, uh, uh, it happens not because of deficiency of the enzyme, it happens because the resistance of vitamin D receptor, uh, and when we have a resistance of the receptor, the hormone uh, available 120-dihydroxyvitamin D will be normal or even high, cannot have the action, cannot have its action because the receptor is resistant to this vitamin D and to this hormone. In this case, we'll have a child with severe hypocalcemia and severe manifestation of rickets, uh, and usually it happens in early uh, days or early months of his life, and usually it is autosomal recessive disorder. Uh, among all mentioned causes, nutritional rickets is the commonest cause. And nutritional rickets uh, due to a lack of intake of vitamin D. We have in this country plenty of people not drinking milk. We have in this country plenty of people not exposed to the sun. That's why rickets, nutritional rickets in Saudi Arabia is by far the commonest cause of hypocalcemic ricket. Uh, not because we are uh, having uh, not enough nutrition, but because we have a decrease intake of vitamin D from uh, exogenous sources from the food. Uh, another problem 
uh, of uh, nutrition racket or another important cause of nutrition racket in Saudi Arabia that most of us are uh, indoor. Our life is indoor. And when we are indoor, whether uh, our children or ourselves, that uh, no sun uh, will be exposed and uh, sun is very important source of vitamin D. That's why uh, it's better for all of us, our children and ourselves to have at least 15 to 20 minutes sun exposure per day. Uh, and the best time from 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock afternoon. But when the sun, uh, uh, after 12 o'clock, we want to expose the sun, uh, please don't expose uh, directly. It should be uh, through a shed. So you, you, you sit or you, you stand below the shed and, uh, and the sun will come from your side, not a direct exposure. Otherwise, we'll have a problem from direct sun exposure. Uh, there is also a common practice by our mothers that they keep breastfeeding their children throughout two years without any additional food. And as you know that our Quran Kareem uh, ask or allow the, the mother, the lactating mother to continue their breastfeeding for two years, but from age of six months, the mother should introduce solid food containing uh, vitamins, especially vitamin D. So we don't uh, say that mother should not breastfeed till age of two years, but we ask them not to be exclusively breastfeeding, i.e. should introduce uh, solid food by age of six months. Uh, usually there are uh, two uh, peaks of rickets in children. The first peak is through infancy where uh, the, this period is having a rapid growth and also another rapid growth period is during puberty, during uh, changing from uh, a child to adult. This period is also another period where the body needs large amount of nutrition, large amount of vitamins, especially vitamin D. Uh, uh, as mentioned, celiac disease, cystic fibrosis, malabsorption syndromes, uh, pancreatic insufficiency, hepatobiliary diseases, drugs, for example, anticonvulsant, uh, are uh, very important to ask in our history uh, about the symptoms of these diseases when we do a systemic review because they, they are uh, still important causes of hypoglycemic record, but not as important as nutritional deficiency of vitamin D. Uh, another uh, wrong practice we have recently among all our uh, population uh, is eating uh, some sort of diet that prevents the absorption of calcium and iron. For example, uh, eating shabati flour, which is rich in uh, phytate substance. Phytate is impairing the absorption of calcium and iron. Uh, uh, this slide showing how Saudi Arabia is a large country and how Saudi Arabia is rich in sun. But unfortunately, uh, we don't get use of this sun. We are always inside uh, our house, inside our uh, uh, working places, inside our uh, cars, inside our moon, so we don't get use of the sun which is the important source of vitamin D. That's why we are uh, uh, having deficiency. Most of us, children and adults, having deficiency of vitamin D. And as you can see in this slide, vitamin D deficiency in Saudi Arabia is a common health problem. It's a common health problem. And usually uh, the susceptible or high risk group are those exclusively breastfed for two years. Those who have dark skin, why dark skin? Because the melanin substance present in the dermis uh, prevent the absorption of ultraviolet. That's why those with dark skin should be exposed to the sun more than those with uh, white skin. Uh, as I mentioned, white skin people need 15 to 20 minutes per day sun exposure, while dark skin uh, children and adolescent adults need about the double amount, need 30 to 40 minutes exposure to the sun. Uh, 
uh, those with low socioeconomic class will be having rickets because they cannot have or they cannot offer uh, vitamin D fortified formulas or dairy products. Those sitting in the uh, cities, they are more risk than those in the villages. And this is logic because, you know, a modernization makes us always uh, in, uh, inside the doors, indoors, while those in villages, most of their life, they are outdoors. And we mentioned indoors is one of the risk factors for vitamin D deficiency. And to improve uh, our uh, as vitamin D status in the body, we have to, uh, to expose more to the sun. We have to take more dairy products. And uh, we have uh, to educate our children, our families about this problem. Chronic liver disease mentioned previously is uh, is one of the causes of hypocalcemic because of hypocalcemic rickets because of uh, impaired uh, 25 hydroxylation of choline calciferol a chronic renal failure as well uh, can impair one alpha hydroxylation of choline calciferol which lead to uh, renal uh, rickets uh, which is uh, the other name of renal rickets is renal osteodystrophy Renal acidosis is the same thing of renal uh, rickets. Renal tubular acidosis is a common uh, uh, disease affecting children and adults. And in this disease, there are two forms, either a generalized form of renal tubular acidosis, where there will be a generalized loss of important substances in the urine, for example, loss of calcium in the urine, loss of phosphate in the urine, loss of protein in the urine, loss of glucose in the urine. And this generalized form of renal tubular acidosis can cause uh, all types of rickets, i.e., can cause hypocalcemic rickets, can cause hypophosphatemic rickets, can cause combined form of rickets, hypocalcemia and hypophosphatemic rickets. That's why uh, very important uh, to understand uh, this disease and very important to read about this disease for you as medical students because in this disease, uh, we can find a lot of problems, not only rickets. Rickets is one of the problems associated with this disease. Also, renal tubular acidosis could be not generalized, could be only isolated form. Uh, a good example of that is isolated hypophosphatemic ricket uh, inherited as autosomal dominant or six-linked dominant, and this also uh, a rare uh, disease, but rather uh, we have to understand uh, and read about this disease. Uh, so as I mentioned uh, in previous slide, that hereditary rickets could be a high bufosphatemic ricket, which is uh, because of isolated renal uh, absorption defect, renal tubular acidosis, or due to uh, uh, vitamin D dependent rickets due to type 1. Uh, absence or in, uh, uh, congenital in, uh, deficiency of 1-alpha-hydroxylase enzyme or type 2 vitamin D receptor resistance record. Uh, type 1 and type 2, both of them are autosomal recessive disorders. Type 1, uh, lack of 1-alpha-hydroxylase enzyme uh, congenitally and uh, the usual presentation is early uh, rickets, clinical and biochemical early rickets, uh, and to differentiate inherited from non-inherited uh, rickets, usually inherited rickets happen in the first six months of life, while non-inherited rickets usually happen after uh, six months of life. Uh, type 2, uh, vitamin D-dependent ricket, also autosomal recessive disorder, but here one alpha hydroxylase enzyme is usually normal and the problem from the uh, calcitriol. Calcitriol is the name of 125 dihydroxyl vitamin D. So calcitriol receptor resistance, calcitriol receptor resistance. Uh, this type common in Arabs, Yemeni, Saudi Arabia are most affected Arabs of this type. And in this type, uh, very important that uh, some of these children, they don't have hair. They have alopecia, baldness. And the alopecia here, usually alopecia totalis. 
So in addition to clinical manifestation of rickets, there is alopecia totalis. And in this type, they usually hypocalcemia is severe and, cl and clinically bone deformities are severe and affected children, uh, they suffer from uh, manifestation of hypocalcemia. And very important message for this type two vitamin D uh, dependent trick is that it is very hard to treat, very difficult to treat. Why? Because the receptor is resistant. Hypophosphatemic rickets, as I mentioned before, is uh, one of the types of rickets, but it is not common rickets, rare type of rickets, but it is present, and we should be aware of this type. But in this type, there is no secondary compensation from parathyroid hormone. So in hypocalcemic rickets, there is secondary hyperparathyroidism, while in hypophosphatemic rickets, there is no compensation. So there is no hyperparathyroidism. Parathyroid hormone here is usually normal. What are the causes of hypocalcemic cricket? Also, nutritional phosphate deficiency is common. Prematurity is another uh, common uh, disease associated with hypophosphatemic cricket. Decrease in intestinal absorption of phosphate especially those taking antacid. Why antacid? Because antacid containing aluminum hydroxide, and aluminum hydroxide impair absorption of phosphate from GIT. Also, renal tubular acidosis, proximal type, one of the important causes of hypophosphatemic rickets. Vitamin D resistant ricket, which is autosomal dominant or uh, sex-linked dominant disorder, affecting the renal tubules absorption of phosphate and another uh, rare cause, but is one of the causes. Tumor, cancer, oncology can lead to uh, something called oncogenic stimulation. So there is a phosphate loss for in the urine because uh, increase a substance called parathyroid hormone related, related peptide produced from the cancer cells itself, parathyroid hormone related peptide that increase uh, in the cancer, that will lead to increase urinary loss of phosphate and that will lead to hypophosphatemic cricket. And uh, last but not the least cause of hypophosphatemic cricket is hereditary autosomal dominant form uh, or six linked do dominant form which is a rare cause, but is present. Uh, we have many patients of this disorder, uh, and usually uh, in hereditary hypophosphatemic cricket, males affected more than the females. Uh, the prevalence of this disease is one into 25,000 uh, children. Euphosphate usually uh, lost by the renal tubules, where we have low phosphate and normal calcium, normal serum calcium, and the vitamin D will be uh, normal or low, 125 the hydroxyl vitamin D will be low or normal, and usually this type of rickets is severe, hereditary rickets is severe, and associated with short stature. Uh, congenital rickets, another uh, common problem, uh, why it happened? Usually due to deficiency of vitamin D from the mother. So if the mother during pregnancy is not taking uh, enough supplement from vitamin D, uh, also she will have, uh, during pregnancy, she will have vitamin D deficiency. And here, uh, fetus will not have enough vitamin D during gestation so the child will have, or the baby will have, in the first six months of life, especially the first three months of life, uh, low vitamin D, which lead to hypocalcemia. And the hypocalcemia, uh, sometimes the child present, or the baby present in the emergency room with uh, the Caesar, uh, with tetany, uh, with other manifestation of uh, hypocalcemia. That's why we usually uh, ask the mother to take prophylactic vitamin D supplementation uh, during her pregnancy, as well if she's lactating after delivery, if she wants to lactate also, she should be 
uh, on prophylactic vitamin D and the prophylaxis uh, of vitamin D, the dose is from 500 to 1,000 units per day. But if the mother is deficient, she should take from 2,000 to 5,000 international unit of vitamin D per day. Uh, uh, now we'll speak about the skeletal manifestation of rickets. And uh, before we, uh, we look into the slide, uh, does anybody uh, knows about uh, what will be uh, the clinical or skeletal uh, manifestation of a child with ricket? Uh, can anyone uh, of you uh, tell me what are the uh, manifestation, clinical manifestation of rickets? Uh, usually, uh, uh, we start from the face. Uh, we have to examine uh, the child from top, from the head to the toe, and uh, the first uh, from the uh, head, we have to examine the fontanel. Fontanel is very important uh, uh, to be measured or to be examined in the records. Uh, usually, uh, rickets associated with delayed closure of anterior and posterior fontanel, especially anterior fontanel, and those with open anterior fontanel, uh, usually it is widely open. So, anterior fontanel either widely open or delayed closure of anterior fontanel is one of the common manifestations of rickets. Uh, another uh, common uh, presentation of ricket is something called craniotabis. Craniotabis is uh, the, when we press onto the skull, we feel it that soft bones. We feel the bones are soft, what is called craniotabis, craniotabis. Uh, third thing, uh, the child with ricket usually have delayed eruption of the primary teeth, and we have enamel defect of the uh, teeth. So either animal defect, delayed eruption of the teeth, frontal and brighter bushing, and the shape of the head will be something called books-like, books-like uh, head. Uh, then we, uh, we go down from the head into the extremities where we'll find enlargement uh, of the uh, wrist and the ankle uh, the bone will be wide, widening of the wrist joint and the ankle joint uh, because of defective mineralization. Uh, the legs, when we look into the legs, either we have a ball legs or no knee legs, and usually uh, what is called coxa uh, vara uh, uh, and valgus deformity. Uh, also, we could have a green stick fractures. Also, we could have deformities of the spine, a bell face, a legs, uh, and short stature. And uh, uh, deformity, bone deformity is important to know. This slide is very important. This slide is very important. And as you, if you can see by this mouse, that the child, the head, that we examine for the sutures, we examine the anterior fontanel, we examine for the head, the craniotabis. Fontanel uh, is either uh, widely open or delayed uh, closure. And the frontal bushing, you can see frontal bushing. You can see also rachitic rosary. The rachitic rosary is the enlargement of costochondral junction. We have Harrison sulcus. Harrison sulcus is uh, happened because you know the costal bones is weak, so the muscle diaphragm the diaphragm is a muscle that uh, contract the uh, the costal uh, ribs inside the body. So we'll have a Harrison sulcus as well. We'll have uh, a wide joint at the elbow and the, the wrist. We'll have a distended abdomen. Why? Why descended abdomen? Why descended abdomen? Yes, because you know the muscles will be hypotonic. Why muscle will be hypotonic abdominal muscle? Yes, because of hypocalcemia. So hypocalcemia lead to hypotonia in the muscles, and the hypotonia in the muscle lead to abdominal distension and shoulder with rickets. 
now we comes into the lower limbs there are wide joints and wide bones at the femur at the tibia at the fibula as well as as you can see bowing of uh, these bones there are some extra skeletal manifestation of rickets as well not only skeletal deformities we have a caesar and titany caesar and titany due to hypocalcemia we could have a generalized body hypotonia we could have a delayed motor development. When you ask about the developmental history, you'll find a delayed motor development. We might have the waddling gait. The child with ricket, when walks, walks with a waddling gait. Uh, fatigue, muscle pain, body aches, all are common manifestation of vitamin D deficiency, especially in adults. It's feeling that always fatigue, when the walks uh, feeling pain in the muscles and the bones, also another important extra skeletal manifestation. And the child also, during examination of the child with rickets, we should examine for other skeletal manifestation. For example, if this child having hepatic rickets, so we have to examine the liver. If this child having, for example, uh, anticonvulsant, so we have to examine the CNS. Uh, manifestation. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we examine the child with rickets or vitamin D deficiency. We don't have any features, and that is called asymptomatic uh, uh, rickets. Recently, recent study document that a high prevalence of vitamin D deficiency among other systemic disease, not only bone disease. So, vitamin D deficiency plays important role in bone disease as well as the systemic disease. Like what systemic disease? They have, they have found that epidemiological studies and new information on the role of vitamin D in preventing autoimmune disease, like type 1 diabetes, like thyroid diseases, uh, autoimmune thyroid disease, as well as cardiovascular diseases, as well as cancer. So vitamin D is not a local problem to the bones only. Yes, it is important, but also to other systemic disease. And usual, uh, usually uh, now uh, a lot of awareness of vitamin D uh, becomes in the media because of these diseases. So now uh, in the last five to 10 years, a lot of uh, population, whether children, adolescent, adult, they start to screen themselves for vitamin D deficiency and start to take supplement, vitamin D supplement, because of uh, associated systemic disease. And this is an example. Uh, this slide is an example of a child with uh, bowing of the legs, very clear, bowing of the legs. And this is uh, no knee, so can happen bowing. Rickets can lead to bowing, can lead to uh, no knee. Also, this is another no knee, and not only no knee, in addition to, as you can see, with this mouse is a bone deformity. There is severe bone deformity. This child is having hereditary rickets. Why? Because hereditary rickets usually uh, having severe form of deformity. So this child is having an knee in addition to severe bone deformity. And this is example or classical example of widening of the bone at the wrist joint, widening of the bone at the wrist joint. Uh, this is a Harrison sulcus, uh, this uh, Harrison sulcus, and this is rachitic rosary. Rachitic rosary, rosary means like habbat subha. Rachitic rosary, that means that it's willing at the cost of control injunction, and if you can see it here, it's very clear. Sometimes when it is severe, you can see it by eyes, but other times you have to feel it yourself. And this is another nice uh, slide of rachitic rosary here. And this is also Harrison sulcus. Also the shape, I forget to mention about the shape of the sternum will be deformity like a child, this child having what is called uh, vision chest, vision chest or victus carinatum. Victus carinatum is another manifestation of rickets and this is here very clear the chest cage of this child like Sadr al-Hamama, Sadr al-Dajaja, 
vision chest. So carinatum, pectus carinatum, and from the side it is in, uh, having Harrison sulcus. Bone deformity, as I mentioned before, frontal bossing, and this, if you can see this head shape, it is like books like shape. So books like shape with frontal bossing. Now we come to biochemical findings of rickets. And biochemical findings of rickets, it depends on the type. Is it hypocalcemic ricket or is it hypophosphatemic ricket? Can somebody tell me about what are uh, biochemical uh, uh, findings in hypocalcemic ricket? Yes, the calcium will be in hypocalcemic ricket will be calcium either low or normal calcium level. How come low or normal? In the beginning of the disease will be uh, low calcium and then when we have a compensatory secondary hyperparathyroidism, we'll have a normal serum calcium. The phosphate is the opposite. Initially in the disease, we'll have a normal phosphate and then low phosphate. Parathyroid hormone in this type, in this hypocalcemic ricket, parathyroid hormone usually is elevated. What is called secondary hyperparathyroidism to compensate for low calcium. So hyperparathyroidism is here is compensatory uh, because of low calcium. Hyperparathyroidism will increase renal excretion of phosphate. That's why when we have a secondary hyperparathyroidism, the phosphate level will drop. The alkaline phosphatase will be high in this type. The urinary calcium excretion in this type will be low. And the 25 hydroxy vitamin D in this type will be low, parathyroid hormone will be high. Uh, we come now to biochemical findings of uh, hypophosphatemic crickets. We have all the whole time, we have low phosphate level, opposite to hypocalcemic cricket. If you remember from previous slide, we have the calcium in the beginning of the disease is low than normal, but here throughout the disease, the phosphate will be low. The calcium throughout the disease will be normal. The parathyroid hormone throughout the disease will be normal, opposite to hypocalcemic cricket. If you remember from brief slide, parathyroid hormone will have a high, but here a normal parathyroid hormone level. Alkaline phosphatase here is always high, and the uh, uh, vitamin D level will be either 125 vitamin D will be either uh, low or normal, uh, uh, just a very important message that phosphate is the major stimulus for 1-alpha hydroxylation. What about the radiological uh, manifestation of rickets? By the way, radiological manifestation of rickets doesn't matter. Is it a hypocalcemia, hypophysitemic ricket, or even a combined ricket doesn't matter. All will have uh, these manifestations. So the clinical, uh, Clinical and radiological manifestation will be the same. The only difference between this type of record is uh, uh, biochemical. Uh, radiological, what are the manifestations? Can somebody tell me about the manifestation of records? Yes, I will be having generalized dystopenia. We'll be having uh, in the X-ray widening uh, of epiphyseal growth plates. We might have fractures uh, of the bone. Uh, we might have a green stick fracture, which is called a zoodo fracture. We might have a bowing of the uh, bone itself in the x-ray. Uh, we might have uh, something called osteitis fibrosa cystica uh, if this uh, ricket is chronic uh, and there will be a tertiary hyperparathyroidism. And this is, uh, uh, is very clearly seen, widening. Cubbing, cubbing, and fraying, the edge of the uh, epiphysis will be uh, irregular, and uh, the shaft in the shaft of the uh, bone, as you can see here, the bone density is decreased, what is called estubinia. So estubinia, cubbing, fraying, widening of the bone, all these are manifestation of Ricket, this is very clear seen widening of the uh, bone at the uh, wrist joint. 
here very clear seeing the bowing of the bones with widening as well. Here the fractures. If you can see this, this is a fracture, a real fracture because of rickets. So how to prevent rickets? Uh, who can tell me from uh, previous slides how to prevent rickets? Yes, yes, you are very important, sun exposure. Sun exposure is very important. And uh, 15 to 30 minutes average from most of the people is enough per day to prevent rickets. So prevention of rickets needs no money, no money at all. It is uh, cheap, nothing, just exposed to the sun. But those who cannot expose to the sun, for example, us, we are professional most of the time. You are as a student most of the time in the classroom. We are in the hospital. There's no time to expose, especially as I mentioned before, the best time for exposure from 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 afternoon. So this, uh, these people, if it's difficult to expose, we should have dietary supplement of vitamin D. What is the uh, uh, usual dose of prophylaxis? By the way, vitamin D doses depends, is it prophylaxis or is it therapeutic? If it is prophylaxis, we need from 400 to 800 units per day, international units per day. 400 means four drops. If you have a drops, 400 means four drops. Each one drop is 100. If you want 800, 800 each, each drop with 100, so eight drops. From four to eight drops per day. If it is tablet, there are tablets with 1,000 per day, international, so you can take 1,000 units or one tablet per day. This is prophylaxis. Different from that, if you have a low vitamin D deficiency or your child has vitamin D deficiency, the dose is different. The dose of deficiency is between 2,000 to 5,000 uh, uh, international unit per day. Uh, if the child has vitamin D deficiency, in addition to vitamin D, we need to give calcium if he has hypocalcemic acid phosphate if he or she has hypophosphatemic cricket or both of them calcium and phosphate and combined cricket in addition to vitamin D. There are in the market three formula of vitamin D. Either a simple vitamin D, what is called vitamin D2 or D3, and this is the best example of using this one is the nutritional cricket, where we don't need to have or to give our child a synthetic form of vitamin D, need to give him the raw material, the raw vitamin D, which is very cheap in the market, uh, what is called vitamin D2 or 3. But those with kidney problem, renal ricket, renal tubular acidosis, hypoparathyroidism, we need to give them 1-alpha hydroxy vitamin D. The uh, generic name is 1-alpha. 1-alpha means 1-alpha hydroxy vitamin D3. And those with renal ricket, uh, liver uh, or hepatic ricket, we need to give them calcitriol, which is 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. Lastly, those with vitamin D resistant, as you remember that the receptor is not working, in this type, we need to give the child vitamin D, uh, calcium through the central line, intravenous calcium and phosphate through the central line and uh, they will need it for long periods of time because it is hereditary record. Uh, by uh, this we come to the end of the presentation but before uh, I finish just to summarize that if you need to treat it's different from that you will give prophylaxis treatment from 2000 to 5000 and sometimes to 4,000 international units per day, and the duration from six to 12 weeks. If you want to give prophylaxis, minimum 400 units to 800 units. Uh, sometimes people, they don't eat or, or they don't take uh, vitamin D exogenous, they refuse to have it daily. They ask, doctor, I don't want to take it daily. In exceptional uh, status, we can give uh, intramuscular vitamin D injection and usually it is huge dose usually the dose is 
200,000 to 300,000 international, international unit intramuscularly uh, for two to three months to treat the record. But uh, my advice to avoid uh, intramuscular vitamin D injection unless it is highly indicated. Why to avoid? Because uh, many case reports of uh, hypercalcemia and vitamin D intoxication uh, secondary to high dose uh, intramuscular uh, vitamin D injection. Uh, I hope by end of this presentation uh, this subject is uh, well understood because it's very common in uh, our uh, country. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, if you have any question, you can ask me.